We're going to look at Great Expectations, Volume 2, Chapters 8 and 9 today. Chapter 8 is one of the most poignant chapters in the novel. Pip is at his worst. Biddy sends a letter to Pip telling him that Joe is coming to London and is going to stop and see Pip unless Pip doesn't want him to come. But Biddy believes the best in Pip. Look on, she says, um, P.S., he wishes me most particular to write what larks. He says he will understand. I hope and do not doubt it will be agreeable to see him, even though a gentleman, for you ever had a good heart, and he is a worthy, worthy man. You ever had a good heart, and he is a worthy, worthy man. So Biddy is, you know, believes in Pip. But Pip is not, in fact, very happy about this. The only thing he's happy about is that Joe won't be going to Mr. Pockets to see him because then Drummle would know that Joe is his, you know, stepfather, I guess. And he doesn't want to be associated with that. And I think this is such a, a really, like, interesting and such a wise line. On page 199, he's talking about, you know, that, what I just said about Drummle and stuff. And he says, so... Throughout life, our worst weaknesses and meannesses are usually committed for the sake of the people whom we most despise. I'm going to ask you to write about that in one of the forums, but I just, I think that that's something we need to really think about. You know, throughout life, are you being mean to people because you want to impress people you don't even care about? I've been there. I've been an awful friend in high school where I was mean to people that were good friends to me because I cared more about what the snooty popular girl thought. And and so I I am guilty of this. I've heard also people will say, um, you know, we buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't like. You know, how pretentious are we in those situations? Um, you know, do you find yourself caring for people, um, what they think about you, people you don't even really like, right? So Pip is ashamed of Joe, and actually his behavior is deplorable. He is a total snob. The whole scene is awful. Poor Joe has done his best. He's worn his best clothes. He's like constantly, sir, sir, he's apologizing. He's trying so hard to do what he can do to be good enough for this new gentleman. But he's kind of overcompensating, and it's so sad. And then Joe tells Pip that uh, Miss Havisham would like to see Pip, that Estella's back, and that they've asked if he can come. And it's just awful. Then Joe says that he will not come back. So look on page 205. This is another really, really good um, place. So he says here, um, I'm not going to come back. Pip, dear old chap, life is made of ever so many partings welded together, as I may say, and one man's a blacksmith, and one's a whitesmith, and one's a goldsmith, and one's a coppersmith. Divisions among such must come and must be met as they come. If there's been any fault at all today, it's mine. You and me is not two figures to be together in London, nor yet anywhere else but what is private and be known and understood among friends. It ain't that I am proud, but that I want to be right, as you shall never, oops, that I want to be right, as you shall never see me no more in these clothes. I'm wrong in these clothes. I'm wrong out of the forge, the kitchen, or off the meshes. You won't find half so much fault in me if you think of me in my forge dress with my hammer in my hand or even my pipe. You won't find half so much fault in me if, supposing as you should ever wish to see me, you come and put your head in at the forge window and see Joe the blacksmith there at the old anvil in the old burnt apron sticking to the old work. I'm awful dull. But I hope I've beat out something nigh the rights of this at last. And so God bless you, dear old Pip, old chap. God bless you. I had not been mistaken in my fancy that there was a simple dignity in him. The fashion of his dress could no more come in its way when he spoke these words than it could come in its way in heaven. He touched me gently on the forehead and went out. What is a gentleman? Is Joe a gentleman? 
Look at his dignity, his grace, his humility, his compassion, his kindness to Pip. Pip feels so guilty. And, and yet, maybe, is it true that certain people belong in certain places? Or is that just the unfortunate reality in a socially snobbish, um, with a socially snobbish person like Pip? In Chapter 9, Pip straight away the next day travels to his town to see Estella. And when he's on his way there, he gets a coach um, and he's stuck with these two convicts and as it turns out the one convict is that man who gave Pip the money at the three jolly bargemen and this convict is telling the whole story about that incident to the other convict he doesn't realize that Pip is a young boy but we learn that the convict in the carriage who gave Pip the money had received that money from the convict whom Pip had helped at the beginning of the novel. The one that he'd stolen the file and food for. And that convict wanted Pip to get some money. So he had this other guy deliver the money for him. I know this is kind of confusing because their identities aren't revealed. And I don't want to say their names yet. Pip is pretty like freaking out here. He doesn't want to be in there. So he gets out as fast as he can of the, co of the co carriage when he's close, and he then walks the rest of the way, arrives at the Blue Boar, and he sees in the newspaper that Pumblechook is taking credit for Pip's good fortune. So that kind of wraps up Chapter 9.